what that n is. Let, let, let big N be the maximum of n1 and n2. And now, of course, you, you should finish by justifying for the reader why, you've, why your n works. So this is the claim, this n works, why? For n bigger, so then, for little n bigger than big N, we have, and I'm just repeating this observation, Sn plus Tn minus S plus T is less than or equal to Sn minus S plus Tn minus T, which is less than, strictly, what? Epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is epsilon. And the important parts here is you've shown this is strictly less than this, as desired. So um, the first few times you do this, of course, you just tell the reader your conclusion, which is that Sn plus Tn converges to S plus T. But you know, once you start becoming more mature, you, it's, it's probably OK to, to just stop here, because everybody's seen a proof like this before. Okay? But the first few weeks that you do these proofs, you should just remind yourself what you're doing and remind your reader. <coughs> OK, Okay. so we just did a very simple example of this, uh, be, because I, it just points out a very key technique here. One sequence converges, maybe not as fast as the other. But your job is to find a point in the sequence beyond which both these places, are, things are small enough to bound this. Happy? All right, any questions? OK, now I'm going to let you uh, help me with the next justification, which is uh, similar enough. Tell me what you would do for the following uh, theorem. Again, I'm going to assume for the next several theorems that we have these assumptions for Sn and Tn. Uh, do you think it's true, or what do you think is true about this sequence? What's the limit as n goes to infinity of a multiple of S of Sn? So limit of Csn, where C is a scalar. Ah, oh, the Cs. OK. Yay for Cs. Um, OK. Uh, let's see, I'm going to, uh, actually, here's another thing that's true. The limit as n goes to infinity, what if you add a scalar to Sn? What do you think that converges to? The sum of C and, and S, right? OK. OK, we'll just do one of these. But uh, tell me what the idea here is. Maybe let's just do this part. What's, what, what, what idea do you think is going to help us show this? For this, as CSN converging to CS, what 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 bound am I interested in? What am I interested in bounding? Good. Let's bound CSN minus CS, and that we hope is small eventually. Yes. What do we know is small eventually? SN minus S, right? Okay, so. Zach is thinking, how are we going to connect this value to the value of Sn minus S? Oh, can I do that? Is this equal to or less than or equal to something? How, how would you suggest we do this? OK. There's, there's the, the operative idea, isn't it, right? Again, this doesn't have to be part, this is not part of the proof, right? This is just something that, in fact, if you're writing up the proof, you, you wouldn't tell me what the idea is, right? You just go ahead with the proof. But this is sort of the, the scratch work you'd do, right? OK, good, so help me. Uh, I should probably start off by telling the reader what the assumption is. So here we go, proof. Yep, given, or sometimes we just tell the reader we're going to start with an epsilon, fix epsilon bigger than zero. It's an alternative way of saying this, uh, doing the same thing. Uh, 
Okay. Then there exists help an n such that n bigger than big N implies Okay, yeah, you know, sometimes when you start this proof, you're not exactly sure what needs to be here, but you can, you, but you can always go back and change what you, to make this work, right? But if you've already seen the idea here and you want this less than epsilon, what do you think this should be less than? Epsilon over C. Okay, with me on that? So now, once you have that, then you're in good shape. What's the N that works? to show that this is small. The same n. Yes, very good. The same whenever this is this is small, whenever this is. So for this n and I'm just underlining it to to emphasize we've done what we were asked. We found an n that works. n bigger than big n implies csn minus cs is uh, equal to uh, this, which is less than um, you. Can, you just you can finish it out, but it's less than epsilon because of the epsilon over c. Okay. As desired. Have I done what I was asked to do? Yes, I found an n that works. Oh, I'm feeling guilty for not saying, reminding the reader what we've just done. So CSN converges to CS. There we go. OK. All right, excellent. Um, not going to do this one out, but can you see what the operative idea is here? Yeah, in fact, you'd use the idea that um, C plus SN minus C plus S is what? Equals Sn minus S in absolute value, right? You can do that one. Hmm, OK. Let me write a few other things that are true. Here's one. Um, help me. What can I say about products? What can I say about products? Take a wild guess. Do you think it's S times T? Always? Yeah. As long as those conditions hold. OK, sure. OK. Huh. OK, this one's, this one's a little more interesting. Tell me what you think the idea should be. First of all, what should, I, what should I be trying to bound? SNT and minus ST. Help. This one's a little more fun. Steve and Maya have a suggestion? Anybody? Kim? Ian? Drew? Add and sub yes, okay, good. Yeah, so yeah, so this is kind of um, this is kind of one of the you can't stop me from doing this. There, there's actually many ways you could handle this, but here here's one way to handle it. Um, it turns out that if I look at this product, which is a natural thing to, to try, of course you get an SN and a TN. And you get an S and a T, but it's, it, all the signs are all wrong, and there's a few of cross terms as well, right? But this, uh, if I add S, T, N minus T, and I add T times S, N minus S, <laughs> then in fact, what's inside is the same as here, OK? So that, this takes a little bit of, of cleverness, right, or pulling a rabbit out of a hat. But this is, this is good. Why is it good? 